Hello, and thank you for tuning in. It's great to be back to some game dev stuff for the first time in a while. I hope you're all doing okay in these uncertain times. Today, I'd like to show you how I put together my Ludum Dare 46 entry, Vamp. I'm going to show you development footage, in order, and you'll gradually see it all come together, piece by piece. If that sounds cool, and you'd like to see more behind the scenes game dev content in the future, hit subscribe down below. Without further ado, let's get started. So, if you've not seen Vamp, it's a game where you play as a vampire and get to go around prouncing on people and eating them, like so. <sighs> Yummy. If you followed my game dev journey, you'll notice this looks a little bit like one of my previous Ludum Dare entries, Life Blaster. That's because it's written in the same framework and tools, and was pretty much used as a base for this Ludum Dare. In the time since that compo, around a year ago, I've refactored the nice bits of code away from the Jam project and put them into the core engine. Things like the 3D mesh room generation from a grid, smooth player, camera movement and head bobbing. This meant a portion of the hard work was done for me from the get-go, and I could thus concentrate more on the art and the mechanics. So where did I start? I've been playing the original Doom on my Switch lately, which I'm really enjoying. When you complete a level in Doom, on the level complete screen it shows you a par time, which you should be able to beat the level in. I wanted to make a similar challenge using a dash mechanic, where you had to clear the rooms and reach the goal in the specified time. This gave me the idea of a vampire having to speedrun through the levels, drinking blood and having to get it all done before daybreak. That took all of about 5 minutes to come up with, so I went and got started on the art. Here I am taking the first steps in pixeling. Hands, teeth, wall tiles, and an enemy. What is this weird mushroom helmet? A few more states for when they notice you and start running away. And various facial hairstyles. A second enemy. This one with a gun that can shoot you instead of running away. Next, I moved on to the title screen. Yes, already! I'm not sure why I tackle this really early on. I feel it really sets the mood up for me and gives me an end goal to aspire to. When working in a team, I definitely get to greybox prototyping straight away, but working alone seems to mean I prefer starting with the art. Who knows why? The last thing art-wise was to get the player hands and arms drawn. They had to be big enough to leap into the middle of the screen like so. With a bunch of art now ready to go, and a rough to-do list, I started programming. Xcode project setup, include 3D game module, compile, run, fail, change code, link a bunch of stuff up, fail again. Eventually, we end up with a first playable. And here it is! I can run around a blocky arena, and I can dash too! Dashing was actually super simple to implement, it's just an easing and a timer, similar to how I'd written it for Friendship Club. So this is cool, the hands move into the screen kind of how I'd imagined, but it looks a bit robotic? I spent a fair while tweaking the easing values on this, trying different curves. Here are a few variations, each slightly off. A bunch of coding later, I have a space with some walls in defined by grid tile, and a simple door that opens when you press a key. My 3D engine didn't have 3D collisions before this, so I had to code them especially. If you look back to Life Blaster, there are actually no obstacles, it's just a square arena. The wall collisions in that were, interestingly, completely fake. Here's the code. Maybe you can see what the issue is there. My next step was to try to get some levels into the game without hard coding them. I thought about setting up a project in Tiled Editor, but with setting up tile sets and coding an XML file parser, this would be time consuming. So rather than that, I thought about using raw PNG image data as level data. Each pixel would relate to a tile, and each colour would mean something specific. Black would be for walls, red for doors, blue for enemies, cyan for blood pickups, yellow would be for the player start position, and magenta for the level end goal. This was a nice idea in practice, but it actually cost me a lot of time. Colours weren't being read correctly by my image loader, and I couldn't figure out why. I had to sleep on it. So it turned out that the files were being saved in the sRGB colour space. I was none the wiser for the best of Saturday evening, lots of head scratching. Luckily, once this was solved, it worked really well for quick prototyping and level design tweaking. With enemy positions set with blue, I could then start coding their behaviours and collisions. First up, they should die when you dash into them. I would have made them just disappear, but where's the fun in that? It's a game about being a vampire, there should be blood, guts and gore. 
I drew the remnants of a carcass and got that to spawn when the enemies were killed. That was fine, but again, not really enough. It just looked like the player dashed through the enemies, which isn't right by any stretch of the imagination. I wanted the player to really feel like a vampire. The enemies had to be surprised, to scream, and to slowly succumb to death. So time to put those teeth to good use. <sighs> mm. Mm. Now I had to make the enemies do something. I wanted them to run away from the player. They would need a few states to be able to do this. These states worked initially, but there were a few hurdles. There was no line of sight detection in engine, so the enemies would always be running. They also couldn't open doors, and they sometimes, somehow, even walked through walls. Ultimately, this was because I hadn't set their collision height, so they got pushed down out of collision cubes instead of pushed out of them sideways. Another bug at this point, and definitely not a user error, was me occasionally losing my position or getting lost while playing. This was annoying me, so I decided to add a second brick colour in to help with level navigation. Once that was fixed, it's kind of a submittable game. Clear the enemies, win the level. Clear the levels, win the game. Bam! Submit it. Just kidding, it was lunchtime. As I do many days, I made a wrap for my lunch with falafel, hummus and salad, all rolled up and ready to eat. Quick and tasty. Now it was time for playtesting, tweaking, polishing and adding so-called nice-to-haves. I tweaked the art a bit, removed those mushroom helmets I mentioned earlier, flattened the colours, drew a coffin as a level goal, drew a nice table that never made it in, drew an extra enemy that I thought I might be able to code in time, and didn't. <sighs> in the final hours before submission, I tweaked the level designs, made some music and sound effects, and added level names and par times. It was around 1.55, so I was calling it done. Here's the game in its final glory. Somewhere along the way, I drew the level complete screen, blood pickups, and a few other things. I didn't record the entirety of development this time, because my laptop is always complaining about being low on disk space at the moment. Oops. It really is a miracle that I'm able to put this video together. Anyway, I hope you all had a fun Ludum Dare. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not. I had an enjoyable time this time around. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to play your game too. I'll be around. Big love and thank you to my Patreon supporters. As of this week, those lovely people have a brand new, totally switch, cool style in game coverage bot running in their Discord servers. If that kind of thing interests you, head over to my Patreon for more information. Well, that's enough from me today. Enjoy your week. Bye!